Hey, Jim Hoffman here from EMS Office Hours. These are your Monday Minutes. Guys, welcome again. Today, we're going to finish up the head and spinal trauma and talk a little bit about spinal injuries. Um, before we do, I want to mention, of course, about Turbomedic Insider. This is a free membership you can go get. You can grab a lot of audio and video, gigabytes of digital stuff. There's practice exams. And, of course, the insider access to the Facebook group. So go check that out if you want to really build your knowledge base and be better at EMS. So I also like to mention why this stuff is important, guys, because, you know, it's not always just for exams. This is key information, of course. It's going to help you pass tests. But it's also going to let you make better clinical decisions. It's going to build your knowledge base as an EMS professional. And it's going to help you write better reports and interact more effectively with other healthcare providers. Now, believe it or not, I just want to mention, guys, we are almost at the end of these EMS quick study videos. There's like maybe one or two more. And that's it. But the Monday Minutes will continue with other content, of course, to help you with your EMS careers. So keep in mind with that and be sure to watch this on YouTube to hit that subscribe button so you get notified whenever new videos pop up. So talking about spinal trauma, guys, the main thing for us in the field is we want to work to preserve as much function as possible for the patient, right? We don't want to be jostling them around over moving their neck too much, things like that, we're suspecting trauma injury okay and always try to care for these patients guys think of them all as being unstable there might be a break in their c-spine or something like that right so treat them all as they're unstable because the trauma can affect the ligaments vertebrae intervertebral disc and the spinal cord right so when we talk about things like mechanism of injury. You hear this so much when it comes to back and neck injuries, right? Which is why for the longest time EMS would just put people on long boards and rigid collars and strap them down into a torture device because of a mechanism of injury. Now, these days we've gotten away from that. Most of EMS does not use long boards any longer. We're using either a rigid collar for certain injuries or we're using a soft collar or sometimes it's just a position of just having them lay there on the stretcher and instructed them not to move, right? So, of course, you want to follow your local guidelines, um, but that's the main uh, uh, goal now, right? We're not putting them on this long board and strapping them down and torturing them. We're using long board more as a transfer device now more than anything else, okay? So, some of the mechanisms of injury, compression, this is that force, it's, it's directed along the axis of the spine. This is when you're falling, right, you land on your feet, um, your head, okay, hits something, all right, where it's, it's you, you, you kind of land on your head, the top of your head type thing. Okay, that's when you're going to get a, a compression type injury where it's directed toward the axis of the spine. Then the hyperextension is when you're going to have the head is actually forced backwards and then you're going to get a tear. You can get a tear to the ligament in the vertebrae uh, and have a, a, even a vertebral instability depending upon how bad that ligament tear is, okay? And this is usually a very violent sort of hyperextension. And then the hyperflexion, these are spinal structures this is when it's you flex downward violently. Okay, again, ligament tears is what we're looking for here, and ligament tears of the posterior spine. All right, there's something also called a wedge fracture, which is sort of a V-shaped compression uh, fracture. You'll see a lot with hyperflexion type um, injuries. Okay, um, then we have our rotation. This is the dislocation of the joints. All right, a lot of times you'll see this when it's in combination with a hyperflexion type injury. And then, of course, with a lot of times you've heard things like whiplash, right? This is the hyperflexion and then the hyperextension, the forward and backward sort of uh, movement, right? So it's kind of common, but it can be painful for the patient. And this is, again, 
that injury to ligament or muscles of the neck, okay? But again, we want to go back to what I mentioned earlier. You might suspect it's just whiplash, but treat it as it being unstable. We do not have x-ray machines in the field. We're not doctors, and we don't know for sure what it is that's going on. Now, when we're assessing these patients, guys, just some key things. You're looking for, again, that mechanism of injury, was it an MVA, was it a diving, was it a fall, especially falls greater than, let's say, 15 feet, right? Gunshot wounds to the that area, the neck, the, the back, the chest, right? Is there an, an, uh, a chance of there being an injury to the spine or the back, okay? Pain, of course. Are they having pain? You want, of course, ask them the scale, the pain scale. How bad is the pain? What is it like? Can they describe it to you, right? Is, what, is the pain new? Were they having pain before and it got worse type thing? You're going to look for deformities, of course. You're going to look for things like paralysis, right? Unexplained shock, right? Spinal shock, otherwise known as neurogenic shock. This can actually result from a complete transection of the spinal cord. And then the patient can have a loss of vascular control, which is causing, of course, the shock to happen, right? So... You've got to go ahead and do your assessment. Think about things. If they're in shock and you're not seeing any bleeding, right? Again, treat these patients as if they are unstable, okay? Now, guys, your treatment for these patients, again, you're going to follow local guidelines. You're going to follow what your instructor, what your your agency is telling you to do, all right? Uh, mobilization, of course, is the big one, right? And sometimes that mobilization, like I mentioned earlier, might just be having them lay still on the stretcher and not instruct them not to move their neck or their head too much or too quickly, right? Of course, when a monitor the airway, oxygen is needed, and of course, IV, especially we're talking things like shock that might be going on as well. Okay, so guys, like I said, this is probably, I think, the next to last video inside the Monday Minutes as far as the EMS Quick Study Tips. Be sure to check out the blog at emsofficehours.com to get all of the previous episodes so that you can benefit from these quick tips when it comes to your exams, preparing, building your knowledge base, okay, um, interacting and writing reports. And again, guys, check out Turbo Medic Insider. It's a free membership. Go check that out. Become a member there and get access to the content there as well. Again, to build your knowledge, just move your knowledge needle a little bit every day, every week, and you will be well on your way to EMS success, whether it's on exams or in your EMS career. All right, guys, that's it for me. I hope you'll follow me on other social media channels. Um, I'm at EMS Safe on both Instagram and Twitter, and you can, of course, get me on Facebook at The EMS Professional there. All right, guys, questions, comments, be sure to send them over to me. Um, my email is contact at emsofficehours.com. And again, go to emsofficehours.com, subscribe to these videos, and get notified when this stuff comes out so you'll be the first to know that it's there. Okay? And guys, you have some minutes of your own. Now I'm kind of winding down. Be sure to send me questions, comments, or minutes you want me to cover here on these episodes, and I will be sure to go ahead and add them to the Monday Minutes, okay? All right, that's it for me, guys. As always, I am Jim Hoffman from EMS Office Hours on the Monday Minutes. Stay safe.